key number one very quickly the first key according to the revelation of scripture that is responsible for activating supernatural preservation is the new birth experience please write it down you have to encounter jesus in the new birth experience if you desire supernatural preservation ephesians chapter 1 we'll start our reading from verse 19 then we'll jump to chapter 2 from verse 4 and 6 the bible lets us know that paul now was praying over the church in ephesus that we would know the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the workings of his mighty power we're still reading no no go to next verse i'll tell you when to jump to verse 2 next verse please which he wrote in christ when did he wrote it in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places that means the resurrection of jesus came with an implication that is an advantage to the believer are we together now the bible says far above please help me name them number one principality number two power three might four dominion and then every name that is named not only in this world it doesn't matter what planet what 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 um galaxy what space it does not matter he has been exalted as lord and christ above them all far above far above this is the indestructible life it is the realm we have been elevated to by christ now chapter 2 from verse 4 it says but god who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us next verse verse 5 it says even when we were dead in sin had quickened us together someone shout together that's the revelation shout together had quickened us together with christ by grace are ye saved and then verse 6 and had raised us up together hallelujah he has raised us up together and made us to sit together three togethers number one quickened us together raised us together made us to sit together location in heavenly places but listen this will only remain a recitation until you have encountered jesus the son coming to church does not save having a christian name does not save are we together being around christians does not save in itself you must encounter the son of the living god you want to be able to rise and activate divine supernatural preservation it happens at the instance of the new birth first john chapter 5 from verse 4 and 5 please first john chapter 5 from verse 4 and 5 what is the implication of this new life that we have in christ for whatsoever is born of god whatsoever means you and your business and your career and your destiny whatsoever provided it is born of God has within it capacity that overcomes the world and that this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith here is a word for you who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God it doesn't get clearer than this who is he that overcometh the adversary who is he that overcometh situations and circumstances but he that believeth whenever we talk about the new birth experience most people think it's just an initiation into a religion founded by a man who was called jesus it's more than that the encounter with the son of the living god the bible tells us jesus was speaking and said i am the way the truth and the life not one of the ways not one of the truths not one of the lives i am the way exclusively the truth and the life it says no man cometh to the father except by me are we learning something the new birth experience in as much as we love and continue to love all those who have not met jesus christ or are not interested 
in that relationship with Jesus Christ. We will continue to love them most assuredly and most sincerely. But I tell you the truth and I submit to you by the authority of God's word. Um, except by the mercy of God and then the covering that comes from other believers. But on their own, anyone who is not saved, Satan has legal access over their lives. Did you get that now? That anyone who has not experienced salvation through Jesus Christ, Satan has unrestrained access to that person. So key number one, you want to activate supernatural preservation, you must be a recipient of righteousness. According to Isaiah 54 and verse 14, still on point one, and righteousness only comes through faith in Jesus Christ. It says, in righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shall be far from oppression and thou shall not fear. And from terror for it shall not come nigh thee. There is a nature that you have received. Number two. The second key that is responsible for activating supernatural preservation in the life of a believer is faith in God in addition to being saved in addition to your encounter with Jesus the son of the living God you must have faith in God it is only those who walk by faith that get God's kind of result in this kingdom four times in scripture as you know let me just give you for reference the Bible says the just shall live by faith four times in scripture the first is Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Just write it down for reference. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Next is Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. The third is Galatians 3, 11. And then the fourth is Hebrews 10, 38. All of these four scriptures, Habakkuk 2 and verse 4, Romans 1 and 17, Galatians 3 and verse 11, Hebrews 10 and 38. All of them tell you the just shall live by faith. Those who have been justified, saved, declared righteous on account of the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, the son of the living God, that now when it has to do with living, they will live by faith. I have defined faith again and again but it will not i will not i would not stop defining it for every time there is a need for it faith is your conviction the assurance and the depth of conviction and persuasion that you have about god and the integrity of his word backed up by your action of obedience to prove that you believe that is faith faith is not just believing Believing is part of the equation of faith. You can believe and still not have faith. So faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take. Based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person. This is Bible faith. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. Very quickly. The Bible says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, Koinonia, listen now. It says, I am not ashamed. Why? For I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep. Say preserve. He is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So by faith, you commit your life, your destiny, your finances, your family to God. And you know that he is faithful to preserve against that day. Are we learning? Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 39. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 39. Hebrews chapter 10 did i get that 10 39 there's a scripture i'm looking for let's see 38 okay yeah that's true no 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 give us give us 39 the bible says we are not of them that draw back unto perdition but of them that 
believe unto the saving of the soul. There's a version that says unto the preserving of the soul. You believe unto the preserving of the soul. Hallelujah. You can believe unto preservation. You can believe unto salvation. We are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe unto the preserving of the soul. Next scripture. Psalm 16 verse 1. Psalm 16 verse 1. I'm giving us scriptures that let you see that if you want to activate supernatural preservation, it will happen at the instance of your faith in God. It says, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we have chosen to trust in the name of the Lord. Therefore, preserve me. It's a prayer. Preserve me, O God. Why? For in thee do I put my trust. Unto thee, O Lord. You know that song? Do I lift up my soul unto thee, O Lord? Do I lift up my soul, O my God? I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me powerful song give us that scripture again 16 verse 1 preserve me O God for indeed do I put my trust Psalms 86 and verse 2 Psalms 86 and verse 2 preserve my soul for I am holy O thou my God save thy servant that trusted in thee not your servant that is serving you not your servant that loves you. Preserve the one who trusts in you. You can be walking for God and not trust him. You will be surprised to see that even though you love him, but because you have not through light and faith activated these principles, your life may not capture that experience of preservation. Number three. Now I love number three. Are you ready? The third key for activating supernatural preservation is encounter with light. Your encounter with light. Put in bracket the word. When God was restoring creation from decadence, the first thing that happened was the restoration of of light let there be light and there was proverbs chapter 2 and verse 11 proverbs 2 and verse 11 it says discretion shall preserve thee understanding shall keep thee say light we are kept on the strength of the discretion and the understanding that we have we are both preserved and kept by light oh this is where i want to challenge you dear beloved people of god you must make up your mind as a lifetime project that you will fight ignorance you will fight spiritual ignorance from your life because for as long as you remain in the darkness of ignorance no matter how sincere and how well-meaning you are, Satan will continue to prevail over you, even though you are in Christ. For the Bible says, an heir, for as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave, even though he be lord of all. That means the experience of a child, a spiritual babe, and one who is a slave, completely not even in the faith, will remain the same provided there is no light. Psalms 40 and verse 11. God is speaking to us. Psalm 40 and verse 11. It says, Withhold not thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continue.
continually preserve me. Not just your loving kindness, your loving kindness and your truth that they preserve me. If you do not understand the principles of the kingdom, you will be surprised how many things will happen in your life and destiny that should not be. All because of the prevalence of ignorance, spiritual ignorance. Everybody say light. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, Jesus himself made a very prophetic statement. Please give it to us. He said, but he answered and said, this was Satan now after he tempted Jesus, it is written. Remember everything that is written is written because it should not be changed. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So when it has to do with your living extends to your preservation because part of the definition of preservation is to keep you to last and to remain you will need the word of god so men live principally by bread earthly nourishment and by divine words the word of god if you have bread and you do not have the word of god you will still die light Let's look at one scripture. Psalm 91 where we read earlier and verse 4. Psalm 91 and verse 4. Please give it to us. It said, He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. I continue to see to it that week in, week out, we are exposed to the various dimensions of the light of God's word because you only arise and you shine because your light is come not because you are tired of sitting arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you light is powerful John 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness. Please give it to us, John 1, 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I've given this example many times. Let me give it again. That if a room has been left dark for 10 years, follow my illustration, please. And then another room has been left dark for five years. Another room has been left dark for one year. Another room has been left dark without light now for one month and then one week and then one day and then a few hours. If you connect all of those dark rooms to the same switch, the moment you switch on, you put the switch on, which of the rooms will come up first? So light does not have respect for how long the darkness has been. At the instant the light comes, it means that even if it has been 100 years of captivity, the moment the light comes, you can be sure that a 100 years old problem will live like the one that started this morning at the instance of light. Did you get that now? Very powerful. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. When the devil wants to waste your life and destiny, let me tell you one of the things that the devil does. He exposes you to any other thing but light. The Bible says that was the true light. That means there are false lights. You can be exposed to a body of truth that carries a semblance of light, but in the realm of the spirit does not sustain the power to bring you true liberty. The Bible says that was the true light that lighted every man. If it is light, it does not light some people. If it is genuine light, 
when the power holding company brings light it doesn't on for only yoruba people it doesn't on for only Igbo people it doesn't on for only Hausa people. It doesn't bring light for only Europeans and Americans. Everyone provided is light. Any light that lights someone and cannot light another is not true light. He said that was the true light. That means there are certain spiritual truth that only seem to make sense to a certain group of people and not to others. That is not true light. If it is true light, it sustains the power to give illumination to all who are in the room, not some. He says, no man can light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but you put it on a lampstand and it will give light to everybody who is in that room. The power of light. You have to be equipped with the knowledge the knowledge of who you are and the knowledge of what you are able to do in christ your positional advantage your advantage by reason of relationship is that true and then be exposed to all the arsenals of victory that have been given to the believer in christ you are not going to manufacture any weapon of victory just by yourself uh -uh. they are already there they are spiritual arsenals light so number one the new birth experience then walking by faith then being exposed an encounter with light that means you have to sit down listen this truth you see is sold so you have to buy it you don't just receive the truth the bible says you buy the truth the idea is that it will cost you you use honor to buy the truth you use passion to buy the truth these are currencies you use discipline to buy the truth it says in the latter time some will not endure sound doctrine you can use endurance as currency to buy the truth we live in a world where in as much as god is a god of speed our idea and our obsession for sharp sharp instant manifestation has has brought a lot of ills and woes to many sincere people let me tell you the truth when it has to do with walking in kingdom power and authority it will take time to understand the ways of god you're not going to just browse through scripture, check one verse or the other, or just download the top 10 scriptures, just read them very carelessly with half of your heart thinking about something and expect to walk in victory. No, it will take time. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. It says, do not let them depart out of your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. That means not everybody will find them they are alive to those who find them and the law of finding is everyone that seek it find it are you learning light please obtain grace this night to damage every spirit of laziness that will not allow you stay with god's word can i tell you thank god for morning devotion thank god for the little five ten minutes it's supposed to prime your life spiritually but let me tell you sincerely if you want to survive these end times please look at me let me leave this bible to remind some of you that you've not held it in a very long time the lord is mercifully but seriously speaking to you that if you throw away this bible carry any other thing else it's only a matter of time your life will nose dive in a way that you'll be surprised when Satan came to Jesus, your Jesus, his weapon of defense was light. It is written, not I want, not mind your business, not there is this wise saying, it is. Many people challenge the realm of the spirit and the arsenals of darkness with wise sayings. Quotes. The devil does not have respect for those things. The only thing that sustains the power to compel his obedience is that which is written. Are we blessed? Number four, is God speaking to someone? The fourth key that is responsible for activating supernatural preservation is the prophetic. Please pay attention now. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, the prophetic. 
please read with me ready one to read and by a prophet uh-huh the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet was he preserved there is supernatural preservation that is activated by and through the ministry of the prophetic many people have downplayed the prophetic and justifiably so because sadly we men and women of god across the globe have not done the kind of justice that should be done in properly administering the prophetic for various reasons and so people have abused the prophetic people have stretched the prophetic beyond its jurisdiction of relevance and so many people in anger to those mismanagements and misuse have thrown the prophetic just folded it and threw it away anything prophetic they say go away the word is enough for me you are right but you are wrong you are very wrong and you see in the, in the realm of the spirit you you are not told you are wrong by saying you are wrong you are told but you are wrong by the disaster that follows your being wrong do not neglect the prophetic just because there have been mistakes there have been all kinds of things around it can i tell you sincerely one of the assignment of a true prophet of god sent to people is to be an instrument of preservation and principally that preservation comes number one through words in fact let me give you go go to um hosea chapter 12 let's start from verse um verse 10 or 11 just it says i have spoken by the prophets how did i speak so god also speaks by the prophets principally today in in the new testament the primary channel for his communication is through his word god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past by the prophets had in this last day spoken to us through his son but he did not say only his son in order of priority his son but in addition to the speakings of the word the ministry of the prophets prophets here does not just mean those in the prophetic office the prophetic meaning the ministerial office mandated to speak into your life and to activate preservation i have also spoken by the prophets he says and i have multiplied visions i have used similitude all by the ministry of the prophets this is where prophetic actions came from that sadly has been abused but within the boundary of scripture and the leadership of the holy spirit there is the ministry of the prophetic anointing with oil speaking over your life and every prophetic instruction that is consistent with the character of the christ are we learning Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 8. Ah, powerful scripture. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, take note, one saith, destroy it not. Why? For there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake. That means the same way you carry um a cluster with wine and someone just wants to carelessly pour it and then someone says no he prohibits it and said destroy it not there is an advantage in it god is saying that is what i will do when my prophets declare over you and say destroy her not destroy him not because there is something in their destiny that the world still needs are you are you getting that now as wine is found in the cluster as one said and one said destroy it not for a blessing is in it that means everything that carries a blessing should not be destroyed but it takes one who says destroy it not that is the ministry of the prophetic that you can draw a spiritual line and say satan thus far have you come no further shall you go over this family over this destiny over this business destroy it not for there is a blessing in it 
Psalm 102 and verse 20. The ministry of the prophetic. The Bible says to hear the groaning of the prisoner. This is part of the ministry of the prophetic. And to lose those that are appointed to death. To lose those by the prophetic. That when you hear the groaning of the prisoner. You are given the grace and the power to lose those that are appointed unto death. Without the ministry of the prophetic, there are many dimensions of the kingdom experience that believers would not be able to step into. Now, do not get into that illusion of, I know God alone, I don't need anybody. We've corrected it many times here. In order of priority, your knowledge of Jesus and your passion to him should be greatest, more than any man. But in addition to that, God has put systems and structures in this kingdom. The Bible says the foundation. Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone. But Jesus is not the foundation there according to the scriptures. The foundation is the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. You can get it right with the cornerstone and fail in the foundation. When the rain comes and the winds blow, you will see that the house fell, not just because of the chief cornerstone, but because of the foundation. Destroy it not. Even Jesus Christ, you've read, uh, we, we, we've, we've discussed it many times here. Jesus himself walked upon the earth and he would not start his ministry until he encountered a total of three prophets. Jesus Christ in his entire ministry encountered three prophets who ministered to him not just those who were there the first of the prophets was Simeon in the temple the second was Anna the prophetess the third was John the Baptist it was after his encounter with three prophets that he could now start ministry if he had started ministry neglecting that he would have been surprised it was Simeon that held him and spoke to baby Jesus. Anna the prophetess had been praying him down from heaven. And when she saw him, she said, you are here because I prayed. Oh, it's not just because Mary knew how to push well. I prayed you. So while, that, while Mary was shouting, you, you don't read in the Bible that Mary put her hand on her head and was almost dying. It's not because the midwives helped her well. It's because there was a prophetess who was on their, her knees in the temple commanding that the word must become flesh. So when the Bible says the word became flesh, don't cheapen that statement. It happened at the instance of the prophetic. The word does not just become flesh because it should become flesh. It becomes flesh because it is the spirit and the bride that says come. Mm. Knowing what should be does not make it happen. It will take your encounter with the vessels ordained and anointed by God. Now the balance there is that you don't go ahead worshipping Apostle Joshua Selman and worshipping prophets and apostles simply because of the position that they hold. It is an election of grace. This is the balance. Most people knowing the excellency of the authority and the power that has come with this office and the ministerial office generally will use it as an opportunity to put God's people on in bondage and threaten people with all kinds of causes and say oh, no 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 a cause causeless will not stand mm -mm. if you are affected by it is just ignorance before a cause works there is a there are rules of engagement in the realm of the spirit it has to check that there is a defaulting that authorizes it and remember that the prophecy of scripture the prophecy of scripture, you want to make reference to my teaching, sadly it's an audio, I've not done any video version of it. Why prophecies fail? I'm sure next year, God will grant grace, these are some of the series coming in next year. I taught years ago why prophecies fail. The prophecy of scripture is the highest and noblest dimension of prophecy. It is written, is greater than I saw. It is written, is greater than I heard. In the beginning was the word, not was a voice. The voice only came because there was the word. Are we together? But within the boundary of balance, 
within the boundaries of doctrine and within the boundary of scripture the the prophetic is powerful and it holds one of the keys to releasing and activating divine preservation and that's why as prophetic declarations come tonight that that fire will come from this altar and land on someone's destiny and you see the truth is that words don't die that means the word does not just come as you are saying may the grace of our lord jesus christ the word remains on you even when you are 30 years old the word remains the word does not know the word does not get tired it stays if the word was declared to preserve you it would not stop working until you are preserved because it must return to the one who sent it and it's not a man that sent it it only came through us holy men wrote as they were inspired of the spirit are we blessed the prophetic so let's do a quick recap before i talk about the fifth number one is the new birth experience that in redemption there is provision to be lifted above thrones dominions every name that is named number two is faith your faith in god you have to walk by faith the faith walk is not for a particular movement of faith a word of faith or pentecostals or charismatics faith walk is for every believer number three is the power of light that is a major one generally speaking your excelling in the kingdom is light dependent not dependent on emotion or dependent on the gravity of the pain or the sorrow you are going through it is light that liberates number four the prophetic number five are you ready now the anointing yes the anointing is one of the mysteries that activates the operation of preservation psalms 105 from verse 12 to 15 psalms 105 12 to 15 please give it to us psalms 105 it says when they were but a few men in number yea very few and strangers in it we're reading to 15 when they went from one nation to the other from one kingdom to another people he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sakes saying touch not mine touch not those whom my anointing has come upon he didn't say touch not my people uh -uh. when it has to do with preservation there is something the presence of the anointing upon their life is a mark and a seal was it not a mark upon cain that was the cause that god gave cain god did not flog cain to cause him he said i will put something upon you and cain said this is too much because of the mark that is on me every man who sees me this mark will make every man who sees me to kill me reduce my burden that means there is a mark that can come upon you and can make everything that sees you to leave you in peace There are times you are pressed, you are running to go and use the restroom and just when you are almost colliding with the door, you see a notice there, out of service. You painfully have to turn back and look for another place. A mark was put there to warn you that no matter how pressed you are, your being pressed is no excuse to open this door. Is that true? There are times you want to open a door and you see closed or you want to go to a place, you see a sign closed. The anointing, among the many things it does, is it marks you. There is a statement that the anointing makes on your life that the realm of the spirit understands. One of it, according to this scripture, is touch not. Provided you are not his anointed, that's all right. Do my prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. Are we together? Untimely death.
touch not my anointed accidents touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm Isaiah 10 19 part of the ministry of preservation is to break wicked yokes that are already hanging Isaiah did I get that right look for, look for it for me broken because of the anointing 27 huh yes 10 27 I think I confused it with Luke 10 19 and it shall come to pass in that day Somebody say, this is the day. That his burden, he never said God's burden. So whoever put that burden has life. His burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck. Satan has burdens and he has yokes. They are not the same, but they do the same thing. He says the yoke shall be destroyed not because it has been there for a long time he didn't say it shall be destroyed because you are tired of having it hanging around your neck and your shoulder it shall be destroyed because of the anointing therefore as this oil comes upon you this night I want you to expect and believe that any yoke Jesus said my yoke is easy and my body hold on hold on hold on I hope you know this idea of yoke and burden did not come from Satan. Yoke and burden just means a responsibility and any constraint. Jesus is saying, in following me and in living for me, you will have these things, but mine is easy and it is light. And Satan said, from that formula, let me invent something. And his burden upon your neck and your shoulder traps you in one place so that any evil thing can come to you, turning you to an animal. But it says it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Why am I sharing this with you? So that as you make contact with this oil, you don't just think, oh, in church as usual, Pentecostals have come with all these their things. Okay? Mm -mm. You, can, you can do this and from a standpoint of religiosity and it will have no life. You just made yourself oily. And yet the realm of the spirit will not respect it. You just live as an oily version of yourself with everything remaining there that was there before you came. But someone shout, no way. No way. The oil will remain on your face, but the fire will enter the realm of the spirit and search for anything that is not of God. I assure you by my God, who is your God, that everything hanging on your neck, kaparus kadibadakata, hanging on your shoulder, by this encounter with this anointing, it must fall off from your destiny. I hear the chains falling. I hear the pain falling. I hear the burdens falling. Ah! I see the yokes falling. I hear the burdens falling. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, fridge fell on my head one day. And if you want to know, was it fridge or something? I can't remember where I was. I think it was somewhere in school. And fridge fell and landed on my head. So imagine carrying something like that, but not gently, that it fell.